Welcome to the Trend Micro Deep Security video series. My name is Nick Russo, and I'm a customer service engineer on the Hybrid Cloud Support Team. For part two of configuring the anti malware protection module, we'll review full versus quick manual scans, quarantine settings, inclusions and exclusions, the scan cache options for the Deep Security Virtual Appliance, and maximizing performance when anti malware is enabled. After completing the scan configurations from part one, we now have the options set in our environment for performing scheduled and manual malware scans. If I'm looking at the anti-malware protection module for a particular computer, at the bottom of the page, there's a malware scan section with three buttons, quick scan for malware, full scan for malware, and cancel malware scan. If I select quick scan, the agent will look for currently active malware, but will not perform deep file scans to look for dormant or stored infected files. The quick scan provides a fast, high-level scan of critical system areas for currently active threats and is significantly faster than a full scan on larger drives. The quick scan has no additional configurable settings and will not use any scan configuration options. The quick scan option is only available on demand and on Windows agent-based systems. If I select the full scan button, a full system scan will be run on all processes and files. The scan that starts will use the option set under my manual scan configuration. A full scan can be ran on demand by clicking the button or by using a scheduled task to run the scan, which would then use the scheduled scan configuration. This option is available on all platforms that support anti-malware and will take a bit longer to complete than the quick scan. If after starting a full or quick scan I need to cancel a job, I can click the cancel malware scan button. Next, we'll review the inclusions and exclusions options available with the scan configurations we covered in part one. On the Inclusions tab, you have the ability to specify if the anti-malware module should scan all directories and files, or you can configure the module to only protect a defined list of directories and files. When changing the files to scan on the Inclusions tab, you can specify all files, file type scanned by IntelliScan, for example zip and exe files, or include specific file extensions with the file extension list. We of course recommend that all directories and files be included, and that you exclude those directories and files that do not need to be protected by the anti-malware module. On the Exclusions tab for the real-time scan configuration, I have four different types of exclusions I can apply. Directory list, file list, file extension list, and process image file list. With a directory list, I can specify directories that should not be scanned by the anti-malware module, and they will be excluded. If I create a new directory list, I can type in the directories one per line that should be excluded. With the file list exclusion, I can provide a list of specific files that should be excluded in the format listed on the screen. With the file extension list, I can exclude files from being scanned based on their extension. When adding extensions to the list, there's no need for a period in the extension. The last type of exclusion list for the real-time scan configuration is the process image file list exclusion. This exclusion works a bit different than the other exclusions. If I specify an exe in the file list, any file accessed by that exe will not be scanned. For instance, if I specify the exe for SQL in this list, any database files accessed by SQL will not be scanned by the real-time engine. Using this type of exclusion can greatly reduce the resources consumed by the anti-malware module. When creating exclusion lists for the manual or scheduled scan configurations, the process image file list option is not available, as this type of exclusion is specific to the real-time engine. Otherwise, inclusions and exclusions are configured in the same manner. Another set of options that we did not cover in part one for configuring the anti-malware module is the quarantine settings. These options are specific to the scan configuration you have applied to your system. If I edit one of my configurations, then go to the advanced tab, under the remediation actions section, I can specify a custom configuration for actions to take depending on the type of malware identified. If I select custom, then use custom actions, I can customize the action taken for each type. For the virus and other threats type, I have the options to pass, clean, delete, deny access, and quarantine. All other malware types I have the same options except for clean. The active action feature mentioned on this page is a predetermined action decided by Trend Micro of how to handle the different types of malware. If you're unsure of how these remediation actions should be configured, it's best to leave the recommended defaults option selected. For the next anti-malware configuration setting, we're going to take a look at the scan cache options for the Deep Security Virtual Appliance. This feature is used by the Deep Security Virtual Appliance to maximize the efficiency of malware and integrity monitoring scans of virtual machines by enabling a reduplication of scanning and malware and integrity monitoring scans. This increases the performance on scan times for subsequent scans of similar VMs, like virtual desktop infrastructure linked clones. 
Scan cache works best when VMs are linked clones or are part of a VDI environment. It prevents scanning identical files twice and is stored in the Deep Security Virtual Appliance memory. Information is not transferred when a VM is vMotioned to another host to avoid conflicts with the target cache. The target Deep Security Virtual Appliance's cache would apply to the newly migrated VM. In your Deep Security policies under the Anti-Malware Protection module, you can specify a scan cache configuration to use for real-time scan and on-demand scan. From the Administration page, under System Settings and then Advanced, there's a View Scan Cache Configurations button where I can review all scan cache configurations and create new configs. The config options are minimal and relate mainly to the expiration time for the cache and files that are excluded or included from the cache. Make sure to check out the best practices guide linked in the video description for more information regarding scan cache. To maximize the performance of the anti-malware feature, the following actions are recommended. Enable the scan cache and change the cache time based on your real situation. Use scan files using read for file scanning. Use the read option on your real-time scan configuration. Using the read write or write options can greatly affect performance. Add UNC paths in the exclusion list. At the same time, check that the real-time scan is enabled so that all VMs are being protected. Set up the proper exclusion list to exclude the folder, file, or extensions. Set the scan limitation to prevent scanning a file larger than the specified size. For file servers running backup software, consider changing the real-time scanning schedule to not run while the backups are taking place. If you're familiar with the typical time it takes to complete backups, schedule a scan to run immediately after the backups are completed. If your backup software has the ability to run a script once a backup job is complete, consider using the command line utilities with Deep Security to kick off a scan. That's going to wrap up part two of configuring the anti-malware protection module. If you have any questions about any of the information in this video, feel free to reach out to our support team and we'd be glad to help. Make sure to check out the links in the description, which lead to more information about the topics covered in this video. Thanks for watching.